Today's video is sponsored by Enlisted. If you're someone that has taken a break from Destiny this past year because Lightfall was, well, you know. Have no fear, as in today's video, I'm going to be covering all of the best PvE weapons from the year of 2023. Keep in mind, I am but one man, and the content I play the most, or playstyle that I indulge in, may be completely different from yours, so I'm sure there are some weapons that I will completely forget, or maybe weapons that I've slept on that you guys can let me know about in the comments. But today's video will still function as a more than solid must-have list to help put you on your merry way when it comes to building up your arsenal and time for the final shape later this year. With each of these picks, I'll go over how to farm them, what their best perks are, and of course, what you might want them for. With that said, we got a whopping 30 weapons to go over in today's video, so make sure to subscribe to not miss out on future content, and let's jump into it. Conditional Finality, by far my favorite exotic in the entire Destiny franchise, we have what is one of Lightfall's greatest additions, a proper Doom double barrel shotgun. This weapon comes as an RNG drop from the Nezirak boss in the Brood of Nightmares raid, and honestly makes the whole grinding experience worth it. This weapon has a unique function for each of its two shots, the first shot freezing your target, with the second shot shattering them and proceeding to ignite them with solar energy. And as you'd imagine, this makes not only for tons of damage on the target you're shooting at, and can affect those around your main focus. This weapon also functions as an anti-champ option for both unstops and anti-barriers, as either a shatter or ignition will stun and unstop, and your first freezing shot can be used to prevent barriers from proccing their shields. Conditional finality is absolutely amazing, and every person should get this shotgun ASAP if they don't have it already. Cold Comfort this stasis aggressive frame rocket comes from the Ghost of the Deep dungeon and is one of the best heavy weapons in the entire game for things like DPS scenarios. The reason for this is due to not only its great perks but also its origin trait, which gives you an extra rocket shot without needing to reload so long as you either revive an ally or finish an enemy in your current life. Combining this perk with the likes of Envious Assassin and Bipod can make for an absurd amount of rockets at once, but I recommend going the route of Envious Assassin and Bait and Switch so you can get 4 rockets in a row, plus a 35% damage boost for each. Explosive Light will also work just fine for that final column too, as I know RNG can be a bit finicky. While talking about legendary rockets, Crux Termination is next up on the menu as a top tier option but in the arc variety. This weapon is a complete random drop as it's in the world loot pool but comes with a massive array of perks that anybody would be lucky to have. In the first column we have Clown Cartridge, Slide Shot, Envious Assassin, and Reconstruction, all of which can be paired with Bipod if you're prioritizing DPS in a quick window, or Explosive Light for the better overall damage per rocket. Now before talking about our next weapon, I want to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Enlisted. Enlisted is a squad-based first-person shooter that combines both PvP and PvE in combat and is now available for free on PC and consoles. One of this game's most defining features, which also happens to be my favorite, is Enlisted gives you the ability to take command over your very own squad of AI soldiers on the battlefield, and each one of your soldiers has distinctive abilities and roles, which allows you to strategize with your fellow squad leader teammates to fight for victory. There are plenty of different sides to fight on like the US, Germany, Soviet Union, and Japan with over 400 different weapons, tanks, and aircrafts for you to customize your squads with so you'll always have plenty of variety each time you play. Speaking of variety, Enlisted has recently received a huge metagame update, introducing research trees for weapons and vehicles, a matchmaker based on the equipment, and various other improvements to gameplay, all developed in collaboration with the Enlisted community. There has never been a better time to explore the new era of Enlisted. So make sure to download Enlisted for free today on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, and sign up using the link in the description or my pinned comment and claim the new limited time special bonus pack, which is a available for new players on PC. This includes 4,000 silver, 3 days of premium account time, as well as several more in-game items. Play Enlisted today, and thank you to Enlisted for sponsoring today's video. Super Cluster. This strand slug shoddy has actually recently come to us in the form of seasonal loot in Season of the Wish, and for those of you guys that never wanted to raid for a heritage shotgun in Deepstone Crypt, you're going to be very happy. 
In the first column, this weapon comes with 4th times the charm and reconstruction, with the second column featuring Vorpal weapon and even surrounded for those niche scenarios that can net you a ton of damage. Slug shotguns are great for major enemies, champions, and bosses, and are always a welcome addition to a loadout, just like Nessa's Oblation, which also happens to be a similar weapon to Supercluster. This weapon, unfortunately, you will have to raid for since it drops in Rude and Nightmares, but if you're looking for a really good energy slug, then you found one. Nessa rolls with Envious, Reconstruction, and Fourth Times in the first column, with the second featuring Frenzy, Vorpal, and Focus Fury. Both of these shotguns are really, really good, and I highly recommend Reconstruction and Vorpal for both. No Survivors now, just like we talked about earlier with Cold Comfort, I want to bring your attention back to another Ghost of the Deep weapon because this one was a very nice surprise when I got it to drop. If you enjoy the Aikilos SMG for your arc builds, well, this is going to be your Aikilos, but for solar. Now, this weapon also benefits from the same thing as the Rocket, where you're able to revive an ally or finish an enemy in order to get a completely new magazine automatically loaded once you run out of ammo. This feels amazing on something like a primary, and it's honestly one of my favorite origin traits. So, Talking about the perks on this weapon, we have the most beautiful perk combo a man could possibly ask for, Demolitionist and Incandescent. You can also go Adrenaline Junkie if you're wanting more bullet damage as well. It's just such an amazing combo and makes solar builds skyrocket in usability, especially with survivability too, as those solar healing grenades are fantastic, and this SMG will make sure that you have plenty of those. Scatter Signal Yet another season of the Wish weapon, Scatter Signal becomes only one of two kinetic slot fusion rifles that come with one of the best perks you could ask for, Controlled Burst, this time around in Rapid Fire Frame Flavoring. Yeah, not too much to add here, the role that you want is Overflow combined with Control Burst, and that's about it. These fusions tend to be used in DPS encounters for dungeons and raid bosses, but also fare pretty well against majors and champs. We also have Nox Perennial, which is much more annoying to get as it's an uncraftable Law Sector fusion, but it is Strand as well and comes as a high impact frame if that's more your style. Keep in mind, the high impact frames are mainly for overall damage, whereas the rapid fire frames are for DPS. This one rolls with Envious Assassin and Controlled Burst and is an absolute beast just like Scatter Signal. Song of Ear Ute Another weapon just like Conditional Finality that I feel extremely strong about, this weapon here is the ideal machine gun that tops all machine guns in my opinion. It drops from the Crota's End raid and comes with not only some of the best perks you could ask for, also one of the best archetypes you could ask for, but also has an origin trait that grants your weapon explosions on kills as long as you melee kill an enemy first, which is incredibly easy given how many good melee builds exist in the game today. Song of Ear Ute comes with Demolitionist, Rewind Rounds, and Reconstruction in the first column, with Sword Logic in the second. Plus, you're shooting your gun out of the skull of a Hive Soldier, which is just so badass. Now, I also want to mention Unwavering Duty here, as unlike Song of Ear Ute, which is Arc, this weapon is a solar machine gun of the same archetype and has some phenomenal perks, with the downside, of course, being that it comes from Trials. It rolls auto loading, field prep, ambitious, and subsistence in the first column, with the second featuring Killing Tally and Incandescent. Obviously, subsistence and killing tally is going to be insanely strong here. In my opinion, it's the best obtainable solar machine gun, so I wanted to bring it up here. Swordbreaker. Yet another weapon that comes from Crota Zen, this strand shotgun is essentially the most ideal one-two punch shotgun if that's the build you're going for. It's a lightweight frame which gives you better handling and better movement speed, with perks like threat detector and slide shot in the first column to combine with one-two punch. Strand Titan has been absolutely incredible ever since Lightfall dropped, and I can't think of a better companion with that playstyle than the Swordbreaker. Appetence. Our third season of the Wish weapon for this video, Appetence is the only stasis trace rifle in the game that isn't exotic, with the only other legendary kinetic slot trace being one that's locked to trials, and honestly, it really isn't all that great. Uh, Appetence, on the other hand, is pretty incredible, as it not only helps introduce a new legendary weapon type to the kinetic slot, but it does so with some really nasty perks as well. The first column features Overflow, Clown Cartridge, Enlightened Action, and Demolitionist, with the second having One For All and Killing Tally. Demolitionist with One For All or Killing Tally is my personal recommendation, and with those perks, you'll be dominating with both grenades and extra weapon damage. Dragon's Breath Oh, Dragon's Breath, my beloved. 
You got made fun of when Bungie first introduced you ahead of the season, and now look at you. The most used weapon in all of PvE, and for good reason. This rocket launcher is essentially the heavy slot version of Wither Horde, where you're going to be dealing tons of overall damage in the background, while you swap to other means of dealing damage on top of that. It causes ignitions, which auto-load the magazine, and is just such a fantastic pick for any scenario, where the DPS phase lasts a bit on the longer side, so most notably, basically any dungeon boss. It comes from the Season of the Wish Season Pass for free around level 30, and I highly suggest you grind to get it. Ross Argo 4 This weapon right here is the only Void 600 auto in the game outside of Gnawing Hunger, and in the most cruel way possible, Bungie has made it so incredibly rare to get that I haven't even had a single drop the entire season. It's a world loot weapon which stings all the more once you realize how damn good it is compared to the OG Gnawing Hunger. Ross Argo rolls in the first column, Repulsor Brace for those Grafalcon builds, as well as Subsistence and Rewind Rounds for normal play. With the second column featuring Onslaught, which causes final blows to increase rate of fire, which is insane with Subsistence, and we also have Golden Tricorn here as well. Absolutely phenomenal weapon, and I really hope that Bungie gives us a proper means to farm it in the near future. Rufus's Fury Sticking with auto rifles, this time we're talking about the 720 RPM strand element from Root of Nightmares. By far one of the better primaries in the game due to its strand synergies, this weapon is a must have for just about anyone that actively raids in the game. With the first column, Rufus brings to the table Reconstruction, Rewind Rounds, Pugilist, and Demolitionist, with the second column featuring Target Lock for Rewind Rounds, Adrenaline to combo with Demo, Frenzy for General Play, and Paracausal Affinity for Strand Synergy. You guys know me, if it's a primary weapon with Demolitionist in the first column, then it's almost always an instant recommendation, and Rufus is no different. New Pacific Epitaph, yet another Ghost of the Deep weapon. New Pacific Epitaph makes its way to the list being the only kinetic slot waveframe in the game for players to currently use. This obviously opens up so many more weapons for us when running waveframes, since traditionally they've always taken up that energy slot, and Pacific Epitaph does a great job not only with that, but also in providing us with really good perks to actually warrant having it on. Taking a look at the perks, we have Unrelenting, Lead from Gold, and most importantly Demolitionist in the first column, all of which can be combined with Pugilist, Redirection, and Adrenaline Junkie. In my opinion, waveframes are best used on red bar enemies, which will always be one shot 99% of the time, so damage perks aren't all that needed. My ideal role for this weapon is a demolitionist and pugilist so it can purely benefit your ability cooldowns, but my personal role right now is demo and adrenaline, which is more than respectable too. Now we also have harsh language here as well since it's the best void waveframe. On here we have threat detector, wellspring, field prep, envious, and stats for all, all of which can be paired with destabilizing rounds, Repulsor if you're running a Falcon build, and Unrelenting for survival. And lastly, before moving on from waveframes, I also want to bring up Undercurrent, which is a fantastic arc waveframe for those that can't raid for forbearance, and it can be found in Nightfalls. It rolls with Lead from Gold, Field Prep, Stats for All, Ambitious Assassin, and Demo, with the second column perk being Volt Shot. Now my personal role is Demo and Volt Shot, but do keep in mind that if you do use this role, you need to manually reload the weapon each time if you want Volt Shot to proc, as Demo won't do that for you. I do think the trade-off is worth it though because extra grenades is always a must. Subjunctive. This SMG was actually brought back from the dead in Season of the Wish as it was previously from Shadowkeep's first season and was never heard of again until now. Subjunctive is on the list because I've seen so many people online swear by this thing, and despite crafting a god roll myself, I don't really like it that much, but I wanted to put it here anyways. I'm still an enjoyer of the Aikilos SMG more than anything, but for those of you guys that would like a change in RPM, you'll love this one. It rolls with Shoot to Loot, Grave Robber, Threat Detector, Stats for All, and Subsistence in the first column, with Swash, One for All, Volt Shot, and Tricorn in the second. My personal role on this SMG is Threat Detector Volt Shot, but any of the other options are more than good too. Wishkeeper. I don't know what it is with Bungie and absolutely cooking with their exotic bows, but they've done it again with this one here. Wishkeeper drops from the star-crossed exotic mission, and it functions as a bow that prioritizes crowd control by allowing you to suspend tons of enemies at a time after charging up your snare weaver arrow. This weapon is also customizable with multiple different parts and catalysts back at the Enclave, so you can truly tweak it till your heart's content. I really love this one for strand builds, and I highly recommend it. The Aramite. 
This season of The Witch, Fusion Rifle has been my absolute baby since day one, as I've been singing its praises ever since I got it crafted. This weapon is similar to Scatter Signal, but instead is Solar Element and is a high impact frame, which means it prioritizes total damage over DPS. It rolls with Envious Assassin combined with Reservoir Burst, or my personal favorite for high impact frames, Controlled Burst because it helps out with that charge time. This fusion is also joined by Loaded Question, which is essentially the arc version that drops from Nightfalls and can get the Adept Big Ones mod. Loaded Question rolls auto-loading, overflow, and envious yet again to be combined with either Reservoir and Controlled Burst. With finally, the Glacioclasm from the Dawning this year, getting a recommendation as the Void version of these two, and it rolls overflow with Reservoir and Controlled Burst yet again. Doomed Petitioner. Oh, would you look at that, yet another weapon from the Season of the Wish weapon set, this time in the form of the best Void Linear in the game. The Doom Petitioner is an aggressive 3 burst frame and has the perk set to complement it perfectly. It rolls with either Envious Assassin or Reconstruction in the first column, with Precision Instrument being the perk you want in the second. And yes, each shot of the burst will cause Precision Instrument to build stacks and continue to deal more damage. Now moving to Doom Petitioner's bigger brother, we have the Briar's Contempt from the Root of Nightmares raid, being essentially the same weapon but in solar flavoring. Briar's rolls with Envious Assassin, Rewind Rounds, and Reconstruction, which can be paired with Frenzy, Surrounded in those new scenarios, and Focus Fury. Really great linear fusions here, and I traditionally use these weapons in GM Nightfalls when I'm matching my linear to the appropriate surge for extra damage. Apocal Integration I won't lie, I probably wouldn't have featured this weapon in today's video if it weren't for my solo players out there. I'm a very big fan of Zali's Bane from King's Fall, which is essentially just better, but Apocal Integration is a damn fine hand cannon, so I wanted to put it on the list anyways. This weapon comes from the Lightfall quest and has set perks for PvE, and of course you'll want Stats for All and Incandescent. Stats for All can actually proc off of the damage that Incandescent does, which makes the pairing really nice, and the weapon also comes with the Nanotech Tracer Rocket's Origin Trait, which gives off some extra damage on top of that. This hand cannon is super solid overall, and I highly recommend it if you're not a raider. Verglass Curve, or Verglass Curve. Yet another exotic bow from the boys at Bungie, and this one is very similar to the Wishkeeper, but in Stasis this time around. Unfortunately, it is slightly worse than Wishkeeper, not only because Stasis in general is weaker than Strand, but also because you have to build up stacks just like Wishkeeper, but with this bow, it requires kills instead of precision hits in order to do so. Now, the majority of players won't feel this difference too much, but once you drop into things like GM Nightfalls, where one-shotting enemies doesn't happen quite as often, you'll definitely know it then. That said, it's still a phenomenal bow, and I have a feeling that Bungie is probably going to buff Stasis sometime in the near future, which will make this thing even better than before. Cataphract GL3 Unfortunately, the best heavy grenade launcher in the game comes from Tras Bosiris, but fortunately, it's actually worth your time if you decide to grind it. This is a strand adaptive frame GL that is the only heavy GL to roll with bait and switch in the second column, making it inch out the rest of the competition and be a true competitor when it comes to DPS. Combine this with impulse amplifier, envious assassin, field prep, or auto loading, and you'll be sitting pretty. The Navigator the exotic weapon from Ghost of the Deep, the Navigator is a pinnacle of in-game content in the current meta. It allows the player to coat their allies in woven mail when shooting at them at a moment's notice, while also functioning as an anchor point for grapple melee builds on Titan with 1-2 Punch. It's also fantastic to pair with the Cenotaph Mask and GM Nightfalls as a Warlock, so you can not only keep the survivability of your teammates up, but also generate them heavy ammo too. Buried Bloodline for our final weapon in today's list, I have a weapon to show y'all that I don't even have because, you know, bad RNG. Anyways, this weapon is an exotic drop from the Warlord's Ruined Dungeon and is a special ammo sidearm that brings the Devour buff of the Void subclass to any build that you're using. While Devour is active, you're also able to weaken enemies on hit thanks to the Catalyst, which is insanely good if you're using Stylus Executioner on Hunter. I really wish I was able to use this thing for myself, but alas, RNG exotics hate me, but I still recommend this weapon nonetheless. And with that said though, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for the video today. Those are all of the weapons that I recommend from the year of 2023, and like I said at the beginning, I probably missed a few, so if you guys do have any extra recommendations, definitely feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks again to Enlisted for sponsoring today's video. 
Don't forget to play for free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox by using my link in the description or pinned comment. New players on PC will also receive a special bonus pack that includes several in-game items, in-game currency, and premium account time. So don't waste any time, check out Enlisted today. And before ending things off, I of course would like to give a shout out to all my tier 2 channel members and Patreon supporters for helping keep the channel going. So thanks guys, I really appreciate it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.